John here, guys! Today we're talking about all the craziness going on behind the Cadex DJI split. Consider that a divorce. The DJI V3 system and new goggles is about to come out. HD0, Orca. This is sort of a summary of a lot of information presented by other folks. Primarily Barwell, It's Blunty, and Mads Tech. Want to know more about all the information being discussed here? Go watch all those videos. It took me about 10 to 12 hours of watching different content live streams to get all this information together. And I figured everyone might just want a quick summary. So the DJI Caddx partnership is over. This should come at no surprise to anyone. <laughs> When this partnership formed, it was a little bit puzzling to everyone. Cadex at the time was by far the lowest quality camera manufacturer out there. It was a little strange it didn't go to Foxeer or Runcam. Well, it was kind of like if you were ever an A student, you got partnered up with a C student for your lab partner. But after a while, DJ could kind of feel who was carrying the weight of everything, but really what sealed the deal was during test time, they were still sitting next to each other and Cadex was clearly trying to copy some of DJI's answers in the form of building their own system in secret over the last few years, which ended up being Walksnail. Yes, Walksnail, Avatar, Fat Shark, that is Cadex. Fat Shark is putting a version together, but it's all the same thing as Walksnail, which is Cadex. And DJI kind of find out, so they have ended that partnership with them, but don't fear, that DJI system is not going away. They have now selected a new partner going forward, which is Runcam. The Vistas, which will be known as the Runcam Links from now on, will be available. There are still a lot of Cadex cameras on the market that are gonna be available for the next few months. And after that, Runcam has a four by three high frame rate version, so fear not. If you're still on that system, which may still be the best system for some freestyling, don't worry. So the best explanation of what Walksnail is, is not exactly a copy of DJI, but you can tell they're using a lot of the same tech and hence why they would have liked to copy it exactly, but DJI kind of got wise and started doing that little, you know, covering their paper a little bit. So they kind of had to guess and fill in some of the blanks. And because they don't have the resources of DJI, because they don't have the patent portfolio of DJI, they were able to come up with a system that reasonably does pretty well. In fact, in certain instances, the image may actually look a little bit better than that DJI V1 system. However, they're having a lot of quality control issues. They're having a lot of issues around the blockiness of the image. Now, why is that? Um, why is it that Barwell has beautiful images in, in his video and Magitech has terrible image? Well, if you think back to prior to the DJI partnership, Cadex had the lowest quality control of any of the camera manufacturers. In fact, we used to joke that it was a Cadex factory worker's job to sprinkle a little bit of dust onto the sensor of every Cadex camera before it got shipped out. And those Cadex quality control issues are showing up in the walk cell system. So you really don't know if you're gonna get a goggle that'll even power on. Bogrinder had his, he plugged in a 6S battery and thought that he fried it. And then he got attacked by a Fat Shark employee who was like, no, it should not have fried. Uh, which really leads him to believe that maybe he got some DOA goggles where the screens didn't work from day one. Anyway, other people have been reporting that as well. And so those same quality control issues are likely to show up in the cameras and the VTXs, which is why there's such a huge difference in performance based on which copy you get of each and trying to nail down is it your goggles is it the tech in the system itself is it the camera is it the vtx is it your quad i mean that's just a nightmare that i wouldn't wish on anyone so if you haven't bought into the system yet i would definitely hold out knowing some of the information that we now know so Runcam is a much more logical choice. So anybody that loves that DJI system that has a dozen quads built with it, fear not because you're probably just gonna be better off from here. And so maybe you thought that over the last few years working with DJI, Cadex learned a thing or two to improve their quality control, but it doesn't seem the case because Walksnail 
seems to be back to their old tricks of just sending things out the door without anyone even checking them. But that's not all, guys. DJI V3 is upon us. We know that there's going to be a new air unit that's leaked. We know that there's going to be a new set of goggles that have leaked. Now, people can't show the images, but some people have seen them. And based on the descriptions, it's a very similar DJI-looking goggle, but a little bit squishier. You've seen that rendering of a squished DJI goggle, and that's not the image, according to Mads Tech, but it does look very similar to that. We also know that it's going to have a higher resolution, 1080p to your goggles. There's going to be OLEDs in them. There's going to be Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on board for some unseen before connectivity options, as well as most likely live streaming abilities. This will be perfect for those professionals in the video village that need to be able to stream their image to the director of photography to be able to let them see what they're seeing as they fly on set. Now the new air unit is supposedly somewhere between the size of the OG air unit and the Vista. So it's going to be somewhere in there and that there's going to be a totally new design camera that looks a bit different. It may be a bit more breakable. It may not have a replaceable lens and the price is likely to go up. Madsec is guessing somewhere around $300, so it could be a much more premium system for something else. Another thing Madsec speculated about is that perhaps they could lower the price of the DJI V2 goggles. We know that it's going to be compatible with the new V3 air units, so they could slash the price of that, make them their budget goggle offering, and that would really just destroy Walksnell. Too soon, Junior. Too soon, Junior. Too soon. And don't underestimate DJI's ability and proclivity for just blowing other people out of the water. They really haven't had to do that in FPV just because they've been so dominant by default. But they have a little bit of Conan in them. If you were to ask them what is best in life. To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of the women. They do love a good crushing of their enemies. Now it's starting to make sense why Walksnail, Caddx, Fat Shark rushed their product to market. They had probably been working on it for a couple of years. And ideally, what they would have liked to do was launch their competing version of the DJI like system in the beginning or middle of DJI's product life cycle, but it probably was a bit more complex than they originally thought. It probably took them a little bit longer. They didn't really know how much time they had, but as soon as they got wind that DJI was getting close to releasing their new version, they had to get theirs on the market first. That's why we saw a system launched with all types of quality control issues, all types of firmware issues. That's why we've seen a ton of different firmware options not all of them actually fixing anything because they're desperate to get it on shelves quickly because they know if they came after DJI, then there would be really no point for them. Even without knowing this, being a system that's very new, that isn't proven, that obviously is having issues, that only has one camera option and one VTX option is definitely a bit limiting. But now that we know that the DJI system is going to come out and jump ahead of them, you see the Walksnell system is basically comparable to DJI V1, maybe slightly better in image, but other things that are worse because they don't have DJI's patent portfolio, they don't have DJI's resources and they don't have a lot of other things to be able to fix those issues quickly. But with the next version of DJI coming, that's probably going to leapfrog and be uh, order of magnitude better. If And they should have seen this coming, guys. We all would have seen this coming. Anybody who actually flew that DJI FPV drone, it wasn't the best flying. It wasn't for everybody. But the image you got to your goggles was not the same image that you see in a Vista or Air Unit. It was much, much better better. It was higher resolution, higher quality, much more like actually flying through the eyes of a GoPro. And you knew that their plan was likely going to be to miniaturize that version, to put it into some type of air unit so that you could put it on a quad that you would build yourself. Now, while that quality did come at a little bit of price, I felt like the DJI FPV drone had slightly more latency but they've had two years to kind of iron that out. So if they can bring the latency down to on par with the original system with the image upgrades of that, I mean, it's a no brainer. It's so much better than the DJI V1, which will be so much better than walks now. Caddx obviously fell victim to one of the classic blunders. Fell victim to one of the classic blunders. The most famous is never get involved in a land war in Asia. But only slightly less well known is this. Never go in against DJI when your business is on the line. <laughs>
That being said, HD0 is still plugging ahead. There, OLED compatible, mic input compatible, HD0 native goggles with a analog input that actually improves the analog signal with a new deinterlacing technology that'll make analog look better than it's ever looked before is still on the horizon and we're looking at an October-ish time frame. Now I'm not exactly sure if that means October to testers or October to manufacturing completion or October to retailers, but it'll be sometime towards the end of the year that we'll start to see these goggles. Now unlike Caddx and Walksnell, HD0 is not going head to head with DJI and trying to beat them at their own game. They're going the other way. They are going with maybe a slightly less resolution and quality image, but also less, less, way less latency. That means that unlike all the other digital systems, HD0 is perfect for racers, it's perfect for park flyers, and they now have a plethora of camera and video. TX options that will fit in everything from a large freestyle drone going up to a thousand milliwatts or a tiny little 65 millimeter whoop. So they have versions and options across the board unlike that new system. So if you want to stay low latency, go with an open source option. You may want to wait for that or just jump in today getting the HD0 VRX module. And that's not all guys. Orca is still kind of sitting on the sidelines ready to release their HD technology that is supposed to be for professionals as well. That also may not be for the FPV community, but it's gonna be nice to have all of these different options so you can work with whichever company you want. Orca does have, in my opinion, easily by far the best analog goggle option on the market. The most comfort, the most features, they actually have the mic input and having audio in your DVR to review later and kind of sync up your clips with your camera is just on another level. So, so many options coming out. The half-baked Walksnell one, guys, I, I really don't recommend anybody jump on that now. Just kind of stay where you're at. But this is kind of all the information that we know now. A lot of the clickbaitiness of DJI is going away. The partnership with Cadex is over. No, that's not really a concern. Runcam, if anything, is an upgrade. If you like this type of summary video, kind of organizing all the different news outlets together into one quick, easy, consumable time friendly version let me know and i'll keep doing them on occasion to hopefully make it a little bit more digestible for you guys thanks guys